If you're already doing cardiovascular exercise, you're probably making at least one of these mistakes I'm about to list. And if you haven't started yet, you need this knowledge to start off right and get results as quickly as possible. Today, I brought the five main mistakes in cardio workouts that hinder those who are striving to eliminate fat or even seeking better conditioning. These mistakes prevent you from evolving efficiently, making you lose time without achieving the desired result. I'm a big advocate of cardio, but it needs to be done correctly and at the right time. Despite some contrary opinions you might hear from people who don't even do cardio, based only on others' opinions, cardio has a high power for improving health and burning calories efficiently. Your body's ability to transport oxygen to the muscles during activities is a strong benefit for your health and has been linked to a considerable increase in longevity and a significant reduction in heart problems. With increased cardiorespiratory capacity, it helps you achieve your training goals quickly, improving your performance and recovery between intense exercises. For example, when you're in poor condition, you often can't even complete the repetitions in a heavier exercise. But with physical conditioning optimized by cardio, you face your workouts with much more disposition and ease. And I see that there is still a lot of confusion about cardio and weight loss, but I will help you clarify as we go through this video. We'll explore the most common mistakes I observe, and later on, I'll suggest some practical tips to help you avoid falling into them. Let's go! The first mistake on our list is believing that cardio is as effective for fat loss as controlling diet with a well-adjusted caloric deficit, which definitely isn't quite right. Of course, staying active is essential for health and constant performance improvement, but it isn't an indispensable requirement for losing weight. This is because there are many people with physical limitations who still need to lose weight and manage to do so solely through a perfectly adjusted diet. This happens because losing weight is a matter of consuming fewer calories than you expend. And if we analyze it correctly, the number of calories burned in a typical cardio session can be somewhat disheartening. For example, a person weighing about 80 kilograms, 176 pounds, would need to walk vigorously for three hours to burn a thousand calories, which wouldn't be productive since we have various other tasks in our routine. When people focus only on aerobic exercises and neglect their diet, they often end up eating more without realizing it. That's why it's crucial to have a well-adjusted diet aligned with your goal. Moreover, our body is cunning, and upon noticing an increase in caloric expenditure due to exercises, it seeks to conserve energy by reducing expenditure in other metabolic activities. It has been observed in various studies that many people ended up maintaining their caloric expenditure stable just with the increase of physical exercise after a few days, because our subconscious reduces effort in other activities due to having an extra expenditure that was not part of the routine. So it becomes clear that although it is theoretically possible to negate the effects of cardio by overreading as compensation, this is unlikely to happen if you are truly committed to a balanced diet. You won't reach the point of gaining weight because of cardio, but the more you rely exclusively on it for fat loss, the lower the return will be, as your body adjusts to the new exercise and reduces its efficiency over time. I place this error first not because I believe cardio isn't beneficial, but to adjust expectations about what it can achieve alone in terms of fat loss. Cardio should be seen as a complement to diet, not as the main driver of fat loss, so remember to align your exercise routine with a diet. There are videos on the channel to help you on this journey, be sure to check them out later. The second most common mistake is not planning the timing of cardio correctly to maximize benefits and optimize results. It's crucial to consider if cardio might negatively affect your performance in weight training. Many believe cardio can compromise their muscle gains. Although the concern is often exaggerated, leading some to avoid cardio altogether, there is a real basis for this issue. There is a certain incompatibility between the processes of developing aerobic endurance and muscle hypertrophy. However, there are smart strategies to minimize this interference effect. A simple solution is to prioritize strength training. When heading to the gym, start with a 5 to 10 minute warm up of moderate walking, cycling, or any other cardiovascular equipment, which helps improve performance in weight training and helps prevent injuries. A formal cardio session, especially those lasting more than 10 minutes, should be performed after strength training or at a separate time possibly in the morning on an empty stomach or at the end of the day, and what is the ideal duration? In my view, between 30 to 50 minutes is excellent for improving your performance and aiding in fat reduction. 
scientific research analyzed various practical studies and concluded that doing cardio immediately before weight training resulted in significantly smaller gains in strength and consequently less muscle growth. It was observed that the duration and intensity of aerobic training influenced this effect, of course, but the authors suggest that spacing aerobic and strength training by 12 hours can be an effective strategy to optimize results and avoid interference. It's important to note that the interference effect is more relevant to advanced practitioners than to beginners. In an eight-week follow-up, combined aerobic and strength training did not impact the strength of novice individuals but negatively affected more experienced athletes with over a year of consecutive training. Therefore, if you prefer to combine cardio and strength training in the same session for practicality and availability reasons, it's best to save cardio for the end. Additionally, by doing so, you achieve greater caloric expenditure since you're coming from a process of high energy demand. The third mistake many people make is thinking that more intensity is always better. To understand this better, trainers typically categorize cardio into two types, low to moderate intensity and high intensity. Hit high-intensity interval training, which involves intense efforts of 20 to 30 seconds followed by an active and light recovery period of 2 to 3 minutes, usually repeated for 5 or 6 intervals, is widely used for rapid weight loss and is excellent for this goal. Many people believe that HIT is superior for burning fat due to the famous afterburn effect, where you continue to burn calories after exercising for up to 48 hours. While this effect does exist, and you indeed burn more calories after an intense exercise compared to a low-intensity one, its importance for fat loss may have been overstated. Studies have shown that even after 80 minutes of high-intensity cardio, only about 80 extra calories are burned due to the afterburn effect. A more recent review suggested that the impact of the afterburn effect on fat loss is limited. Even setting aside the concept of afterburn, HIT is attractive for being more time-efficient, allowing you to burn a similar amount of calories in up to 40% less time, which is an advantage for those with busy days and little free time. Another advantage is that many find HIT less monotonous, with dynamic activities that don't bore you during practice. However, a significant disadvantage is the greater interference in weight training and the need for a longer recovery time. HIT is ideal for people who want to lose weight quickly or are significantly above their ideal weight. It can be argued that HIT is redundant with weight training since both are physiologically similar. With weight training, you also engage in intense efforts for 20 to 30 seconds and rest between sets, which mirrors the structure of HIT. Some experts believe that you achieve many of HIT's benefits with weight training, although in my practice over time, I've noticed a significant difference. After all, HIT raises heart rate more and offers a greater cardiovascular challenge than weight training. Nevertheless, HIT has its value for reducing fat percentage and increasing cardiovascular capacity. Therefore, if you choose to include it, do so moderately and preferably when focused on maximum fat reduction. The fourth mistake on our list is believing that only fasted cardio will bring maximum fat loss. While it's very efficient and you indeed burn more fat during fasted cardio, this doesn't necessarily result in greater long-term fat loss. A study involving 50 people revealed that, despite a higher fat burn during the fasted cardio session, there was also a lower fat burn in the subsequent 24 hours, yielding a final result very close to those who did cardio at other times of the day. Exercising in a fasted state doesn't have a very significant impact on weight loss or body composition. Maintaining a constant caloric deficit is more relevant than performing exercises while fasting. However, specifically in the context of competitive athletes who aim to reach very low body fat percentages, it's recognized that there's no definitive evidence to show the superiority of fasted cardio for fat loss. Yet, they noted that studies involving physique competitors are scarce and left open the possibility that fasted cardio may be beneficial in the final stages of fat reduction to help reach very low levels of body fat. So, most of the time, the best approach is to perform your cardio at the moment that best fits your routine and that you can maintain consistency to continue constant evolution. Create this habit, maintain discipline, and your results will be incredible. Thank you for being here, and see you soon.